Today I'm going to be talking about the QuickBooks Pro Advisor online. <laughs> what is it? Today I'm going to be talking about the QuickBooks Pro Advisor exam. So to get your QuickBooks online certification, you have to take your Pro Advisor exam. I made a whole video about how to find and to sign up for that test and you guys seem to love that video so you also asked for me to just give a little more information on the test because i had just have just recently taken the test so these will be my tips and tricks my name is morgan from finepoints.biz and i'm a bookkeeper who helps you get organized don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to my youtube channel I'm going to start out by just talking about kind of like the basic structure of the test and some of the rules. So if you don't want to hear this and you already know it, just um, I'll put the timestamp on the screen. You can fast forward to this part and then um, get to kind of the meat and what I thought of the exam. All right, so this exam has eight sections and 75 questions. So you'll see in your training that there's eight sections or there's eight modules, I think they're called and each of those modules directly corresponds to a section of the exam. So in theory, if you wanted to, you could just take the training and then right away go take the test on that while it's fresh. That's probably what I would recommend. So there's eight modules, and when you go into the exam, you can see each of the eight modules, and it tells you how many questions there are and the approximate amount of time that they think it's gonna take you. So maybe it'll say there's 10 questions and it's gonna take 25 minutes, something like that. And I think that they estimate that the entire test would take you three hours if you just took it straight through. So it is really nice that this test is broken up into these different sections because each section kind of like stands alone. So you take a section and then you finish the whole thing and then you're able to go back and review it if you want. And then after you feel like you have as many right as you can, um, you can submit that section. And there's really no time limit either for the section or for either for one section or for the eight sections. So you can spend as much time as you need to on this exam, which is really great. And to pass the exam, you need to get an 80% or higher. And so I passed the exam on the first test. It did not tell me my test score. So I don't know which ones I got right, which ones I got wrong. I don't even know what percentage I got right. I could have got 80, I could have got 99%. It doesn't tell you, it just tells you pass or fail. And if you do fail, the instructions say that it will allow you only to retake the sections that you failed. So that is also really nice. It will indicate, go back to this section, redo just this section or just these three sections, try again on these, and you have three chances to pass the exam. Again, if you don't pass, you'll just redo the sections. And then if you still don't pass on your third attempt, you have to wait 60 days to take the whole test again. So that's kind of like the basic rules of the test. And my impression of it was that it was appropriately difficult. It wasn't so hard that you would obviously never pass it because I passed it, but um, you do have to have a definite knowledge of QuickBooks. And if you do your training, then I think that would be, that would be great. I personally, I've been a bookkeeper for about six years. And so it had kind of been on my to-do list for a while to take this particular certification. And I think the thing that was holding me back was I didn't want to spend all the hours doing the, the training and their certification because that takes a long time to do the training and then take the test. So one day I was like, I'm just going to take the test and see how I do and just do as well as I can. And in, in that way, it was hard. Like I didn't know all of the questions. Some of them I had to look, look up. So you can um, have you know an, a different browser open with QuickBooks because I'm gonna talk about the couple different types of questions. And a lot of the questions, not a lot, but a chunk of the questions are just where to find stuff. So where to find stuff in QuickBooks Online. So if you have another browser open and it's like, where do you go to make a new check? You can just say like, oh, you go to the, here. And so that helps out a lot. I mean, it takes more time than just knowing right off the bat where to go but that is a tip as well. Let me know in the comments if you've taken this test and what you thought of it, like do you think it was hard? I really haven't talked to any other bookkeepers about what they thought of it, because I don't know, everyone's kind of in a different spot. Um, but yeah, let me know what you thought, or if you are planning to take the test, let me know, and let me know if you have any questions about it. 
All right, so that's one type of question is kind of like where to go in QuickBooks Online. Another type of question is just like general knowledge of bookkeeping and of QuickBooks. And these are the ones I kind of already knew. Um, for example, like why would something need to be excluded from bank feeds? So it would need to be excluded because maybe it fed in there twice from the bank. So you wouldn't need to actually approve it and put it in QuickBooks. Or maybe you already recorded it manually in QuickBooks. So those are kind of general knowledge questions. And those were the ones that I kind of already had in my head that I just kind of had an understanding of. Then there was the type of questions where I learned something new. And a lot of times it was cause they're trying to teach you or um, educate you about a function of QuickBooks Online in particular. So an example of that like is that your client cannot make a journal entry. I didn't really realize that until I took this test and I had to like figure it out because you know I don't always know exactly what clients can do versus what I can do. As well as when you send someone an invoice, you can set it so that you can see when they viewed it. Also, I learned that you can set a rule so that it will automatically add classes into your bank feeds. So I thought that was pretty cool because I think that has never been a function in QuickBooks, definitely not QuickBooks desktop. So I think that's newer in QuickBooks online. So stuff like that, I was like learning about the program. Um, I would have to maybe go look it up or be like, oh cool, that's like a really useful tip that I didn't really realize that QuickBooks online could do. And let me know in the comments if you use QuickBooks online or if you use QuickBooks desktop more. Similarly, there were questions where I feel like they were kind of trying to teach me about QuickBooks, but it was maybe something I didn't really care to learn. So there's a whole project section in QuickBooks Online that you can use that I haven't really found that to be that useful. So it would be questions like, is a note automatically pinned? And I was like, oh, I never even created a note in QuickBooks Online. So I had to go and figure out like, do I pin a note or what? What are the benefits of using our invoicing? And it would be like easy for the client. All your um, all your finances are in one place, like things like that. Like it's kind of like trying to be like, oh, look how great our program is. Or it was like, how do you mark a project done? And like projects is a whole in that whole section that I don't really use. It's kind of like a workflow management area of QuickBooks Online. And if you already have a different system for your workflow, if you don't really need that, then those aren't really sections they're using, it's not really about bookkeeping, it's more about QuickBooks Online and what they're trying to educate you to do with QuickBooks Online. So I don't know, for some reason those kind of like stuck out to me because they were ones I didn't really know and I was kind of learning things, but then I was also like, this isn't really like a bookkeeping question, it's just like about your program. And all the questions were like multiple choice. Some of them were the, the kind when you're like, choose three out of five of these and sometimes it didn't even tell you how many you had to choose. You just had to like pick all the answers that are correct, which those are, I feel like the hardest because you don't know if there's something small that's wrong within the questions. But usually it did say there's three correct answers, pick all three that are correct. And then there was some that were like fill in the blank. I found those actually pretty easy because it was like to find invoicing. First you go here, then you go here. And so it was kind of like a step-by-step -step they were teaching you or leading you on how to do that. Overall, I thought it was a great experience. Um, I, like I said, I think it was appropriately hard. I learned some new things um, and it was definitely worth the three hours. I don't even think it took me three hours. It probably took me two and a half hours or less um, to complete it. And I just sat at my computer like for a morning and I just took a section, took a little break, took another section, took a little break and just powered through <laughs> and got it done. So if you've been putting it off for a while, I would definitely recommend taking it. If you have a lot of bookkeeping experience, maybe just do what I did and try to just take it without doing the seven hours of self-paced modules ahead of time. So that'll save you seven hours if you just kind of spend a lot of time, focus energy on the test and do whatever you can to just get it right the first time.